Hello and welcome to Monk's Modern Medieval Cuisine. As you can see, I'm in my study rather than the kitchen and that's because I'm going to show you what goes on here. I'm going to be looking at how I translate the John Ryland's form of curry. That's the cookery book of Richard II. Now, the form of curry survives in at least nine different versions or copies. Most of these are fragmentary and they survive as part of a compilation which includes other recipes. And most of them were copied down in the 15th century, so decades in fact, after Richard II had died. The Rylands Library version is different. What you see is what was designed by Richard II's master cooks. Let's just take a look at it. It's a small official book, and in fact the only one of the nine versions that we can describe with any degree of confidence as an actual Ricardian document written down by scribes of King Richard II. Before I explain the reason for me saying that, let's just think about the size of this book. I said it was small. Well, <laughs> let me just compare it to a modern book. So here's a standard academic book, about the size of my head. And here's the size of the form of curry. It's tiny, it fits in the palm of your hand. Uh, and it did when I went to the John Ryland's library a couple of years ago. It was a wonderful experience uh, being able to handle the manuscript. But even more remarkable, is as you see there in that crossed area that's the area which the writing fits inside so it's it's really tiny to read it is legible though now i mentioned that it's the only version of the form of curry that we can say with any confidence is a ricardian document well let me explain why i can say that if we move over to the preface What we have here is the introduction to form of curry. So before the method of cookery, which is what form of curry actually means, is presented, there is this introduction. Now this only appears in the John Ryland's version and the more famous version in the British Library. A quick look at that. It's actually really difficult uh, to read this script even if you zoom in because it's really badly worn but it has a similar preface it's slightly different and I'll explain why it's different in a moment but one of the things that the British Library doesn't contain is this opening line let's zoom in on that and this is where we see that it is an official document it says in Latin copia Domini Regis Ricardi Secundi Post Conquestum Angliae. So the, the copy or the record, the official record, that's the meaning there, of the Lord King Richard II after the conquest of England. That's not actually included in the British Library version. Then it goes on to say, You'll have to trust me at the moment. I'll go later on into how we can read this text. It's fairly easy once you get your eye in. But it says here, this form of curry is compiled of the chief master cookers of King Richard II after the conquest of England by ascent. Let's move this up. by ascent of masters of physique and of philosophie. Let me just translate that for you. So it says this method of curry, or this method of cooking, is compiled by the chief master cooks of King Richard II after the conquest of England, by ascent of masters of physic. So that would be um, medical practitioners and of philosophers and by philosophers. 
So let's take a look at the preface in the British Library version, which is in roll form. It's a much bigger document than the tiny book of the Rylands version. We know that the British Library version was produced about 15, sorry, about 1420. So about 20 years after Richard had finished, had died and had finished ruling. And we base this on the fact that scholars date the hand to about 1420 or just after that. It's really difficult to see. And so to an extent, you're going to have to trust me what it does say. The word the is missing. The form of Curry was compiled. Let's just zoom into that so you can perhaps see a little bit better. Was compiled, past tense, of the chief master cookers of King Richard II of England. So the point here is that the past tense is used. The method of cookery was compiled by the chief master cooks. Notice that the past tense continues on the second line when describing Richard. This is something that doesn't appear, by the way, in the John Ryland's version. The clause says, the which was accounted the best and royalist viander of all. So he was described, past tense, as the, the best gourmand, probably is how we would translate viandier, of all Christian kings, it actually goes on to say. But again, the emphasis is this is past tense that's being used. And again, we can see on the next line about the form of curry, and it was compiled by ascent and a visamont of masters and physique and the philosophers. So again, this is referring to what was done, what was written down in the past. This isn't a present document. So just to underscore the point from the Ryland's copy, this form of curry is compiled by the master cooks by ascent of masters of physic. So this is very much a present document it is the official copy of Richard II of his form of curry. Now, there may have been other copies made as well, but the point is, is that the John Ryland's version is the only one that we can say with any confidence that was actually produced during the time of Richard's reign. And this is backed up by the fact that scholars have uh, dated the handwriting, the hand of the Ryland's copy to the second half of the 14th century, which is obviously when Richard II ruled. He ruled from 1377 to 1399. Now you've had a little background there to uh, the form of curry from the Ryland's library. I'd now like to use the second part of this uh, video to explain what goes on in my study, how I translate the form of curry. So let's have a look at one of the recipes that I hope to be doing very soon on video. So here we have crustades of herbes on fish day. And you can see here that the Latin number is provided CLV 155. Now, if you're not familiar with reading manuscripts, perhaps a little bit of help needs to be given. One of the things to point out is that this word crustad or custard tart, which is what it means, um, you see there there's an abbreviation mark. And that little squiggle stands for ES, so crustades. And then here you can just about see a thin line which is above the H, and that indicates that the, the letter E has not been written down. So you would actually see fiche. And in case you're wondering how those letters form, we've got the F there and the Y. This is an S, a long S. And then we have a C. 
and then finally the H, which has this lovely, elegant descender to the left there. Some of the letters that are rather uh, unusual, I think, to the modern eye, the letter D on fish day, you see a sort of slightly different version in the crustades. And I think if we move into the actual description or the method, you'll see a lot more letters that are quite difficult to, to understand at first. But we'll read this through and I'll translate as I go along. So the, the letter T is written in red, that's written in the margin, and each of the recipes starts with a, a red capital letter. So we have take good de herbes and green de hem smale with walnutis epicid we'll go over to the next page epicid clene agret poshun so just to translate that first part we have take good herbs or greens really so it would include green vegetables leafy vegetables as well as herbs and grind them small with walnuts which have been picked clean, so they've been picked over the walnuts. And a great portion is needed. Here we see another one of these abbreviation marks, a suspension mark over the N, and that means that there's a U that's been left out. So it's poshun that is actually meant. The instructions go on. Lea hit up. Almost with as much various as water. There you can see the squiggle mark there indicating the letters ER are not have not been written down. And at the end of water, we have the ER there as well. So we're told to mix it up almost with as much verjuice. So that's um, sour grape juice or indeed it could be made from crab apples as well as so there's a almost a 50 50 of verjuice and water there then it goes on we'll move it up a little bit seethe it well with pudor and saffron without salt we'll stop there seethe it so we have the long s again this letter here that looks like a P is actually a thorn. If you're familiar with Old English, you'll see a lot of thorns there. They are, it stands for the sound th. Normally in Old English scripts, you have the upper part of the letter is usually extended further. So we call that an ascender. But in, in this Middle English script, it's very short. So that's why it looks very like a P. So seethe, simmer, cook, boil. Boil, hit well, boil it well with pudor this is what you call a i suppose a super a superscript marked it's the letter t and it's with this very strange letter it's a, it is a w and that stands for with so see it well with pudor this little symbol here is an abbreviation for you are so some kind of spice powder mix we've been told to, to see it with and saffron, there's another suspension mark over the N. So the letter U has been left out. So it is saffron, S-A-F-R-O-U-N, without, one word, without salt. And it goes on. Make a crust in a trap and do fish therein on steward with a little oil and good pudor. Lots of abbreviation marks there. Let me translate it first. Make a crust, a pie crust, a pastry shell. In a trap is a dish, either metal or probably actually more likely to have been ceramic. So make a crust in a ceramic dish and do put, put the fish therein unstewed. So you're not cooking the fish first, it's raw, with a little oil, which would have been olive oil, and good pudor, so good spices. 
just looking at the abbreviation marks again, we have a line over a P. So it should have an E added to it when you're writing it out. There's the abbreviation for AND. The word AND is occasionally written out, but usually that abbreviation is used. There we have that squiggle again that stands for ER, so that's therein. This is a thorn here, again. Lots of confusing Ws, which look very strange to the modern eye. And then we have this symbol here, which stands for UR, which makes the word pudor. Let's continue. Juan hit is half a bike, do this sewer there too, and the bike hit up. So when it is half baked, half cooked, this is the, the pastry with the fish now in it, when that's half baked, add this su, that's like a, the sauce, there too, and bake it up. So the previously made sauce that was made from, we go back to the beginning, the walnuts that have been ground with the, the herbs, that gets added to the dish that's in the oven once the fish have cooked a little while. Just a few of the letters to note here. This letter here is what you call more of a long R. So sometimes the R's are written more like modern uh, R's. But there's an example of a longer R which goes below the line, so to speak. And you'll notice here, this is actually really a V rather than a U. A U's, if we go back to the word puder, this is a U, how it's typically written. But they're using the letter V here. Now, they're pretty much interchangeable. Well, they are interchangeable. Uh, but quite often the word up is spelt with the, uh, the different form of the letter U or what we would call a V. We actually unusually switch to a capital letter. Very often when the recipes are written, they're just written all the way through in lower case. But for some reason, we have a, uh, the equivalent of a full stop that's been put in by the scribe, and it goes for a capital I. And this reads, if thou wilt make, notice he doubles the word make here by mistake, make it clearer fish, eh? Seethe iron harder, and take out the yolkers, and grind them with good pudors, and ally it up with the good stews. And then the final phrase, which is added to almost all of the recipes, and serve it forth. So let's translate the whole of that, and then we'll break it down a little bit. If you wish to make it clearer fish without fish, cook, boil, seethe, eggs. Erun is eggs. Hard. So boil hard boiled eggs, make some hard boiled eggs, and take out the yolks and grind them with good powders. So another spice mix being alluded to there. And mix this up with the good stews or the good sauces that are uh, have been created by blending the herbs and the walnuts and serve it forth. Just looking at some of the letter formations again that might confuse you or the abbreviations, let's start with this. Here we have a thorn and above it, believe it or not, that's a U. <laughs> and that stands for thou, if thou wilt. Other things that are quite interesting, again, we have this long S for the word sieve, we have this letter, which is called a yog, and in this case makes the y sound for the word yolks. This is that rather large version here, but this is that abbreviation mark, which stands for ES, which we saw earlier. So it's yolkes. And notice, interestingly, this doesn't happen very often, but the word puder is written out in full, so we haven't got that abbreviated. And I think that's about it that's of any real interest there. Oh, just to point out, just to show you what I mean by the long S, so we had the long S, we've got it again here on serve, 
so the the ascend sorry the descender goes below the line we have the short s's here and here so on the end of pudorus and stewards we've got the short s so it's a bit like the modern s it looks a bit weird at first but that believe me or not is an s well, hopefully in a few weeks time, you'll see this recipe being recreated on Monk's Modern Medieval Cuisine. Until then, I just want to thank you for listening and please subscribe to this channel. And also please consider subscribing on my website so that you can become a supporter of Monk's Modern Medieval Cuisine. So thank you very much for listening and I look forward to seeing you next time.